Hey y'all, it's Brody, and today I'm here to bring you a spoiler-free review of A Lot Sway by Darcy Little Badger. Before I start this, I want to say thank you to Darcy for reaching out to me about receiving an ARC, as well as um, the team at Levy and Quirido, who has been phenomenal in making sure that native reviewers can get their hands on a copy of this book. This is something that they have been very much about from Jump, and I think that's very important and it's something to mention. This book is own voices for Lapan Apache Rep and the asexual protagonist. Uh, I am not Lapan Apache, I am Cherokee, nor am I asexual, so this is not an own voices review for that, but because I am indigenous, I am a Cherokee reviewer, I share a lot of experience um, in that sense, as I always make sure to disclaim. It's hard to put this book in any set genre, but I think the best one would be like young adult speculative mystery. It follows a Lapan Apache teenager named Ellie, and she can control and raise ghosts. So in this world, the speculative fiction world, this America, um, the stories from different cultures walk among us. So um, people from different tribes have different powers, you know, there are vampires, there is magic and wizardry and elves and it's it's an amazingly done world because it doesn't just center native culture like a lot of native books do it embraces like all cultures from everywhere and that's something i think was really cool ellie is visited by the ghost of her cousin trevor who tells her hey cousin someone murdered me this is who did it you have to go and avenge my death and take care of my wife and my baby so ellie and her friends and her family go to the town where he was murdered and track down his killer and they discover while they're there that there's something more sinister going on. I'm not going to get into spoilers, this is pretty early on in the book, but basically they find out that the doctor in the town has kind of a sinister practice going on and that he's not being very honest about what's happening in his clinic. So things I loved about this book, I love how Ellie is just an unapologetic nerd. I think that's something that's very important with native work. It's like I feel like Whenever people think of Native Americans, they think of like this the stoic, mystical stereotype that's really common in like Western movies and stuff, and that's what people think when they think of people who are indigenous to the Americas. And that's not always the case. Like we can be big nerds too. I am living proof that, you know, native people can be massive nerds. Another thing I like about Ellie as a protagonist, um, I enjoy the fact that she relies a lot on her friends and family. I feel like with young adult, um, it's so frequent that we don't see the parents, and if we see friends, they're bad friends. We've all read books with terrible friend groups, and Ellie, throughout this journey of like solving the mystery, you know, she relies a lot on her friends and her mother. And the cutest fucking ghost dog ever. Kirby, I, I need like a Kirby plushie. Darcy, if you're watching, and you have any control of merch whatsoever, please make a Kirby plush happen. I need that. <laughs> Another thing I appreciate about this book, like I said earlier, is the way that different cultures are all woven into it. Um, Ellie's best friend is a descendant of Oberon the fairy, and his sister's boyfriend is a vampire, and every chapter kind of brings you deeper and shows you a little bit more about the way that all of these different cultures collide and the rules of how everything works in this speculative North America. And I think that the world building, while very subtle, is shown to you in a very good way. There's a quote that I love in here that is said by Ellie's mother um, in her point of view chapter because she does get one. And it says, don't rush stories, that's sacrilegious. And upon reading that, that's, that's just like permanently ingrained in my brain. I want it as a tattoo, I want it as a t-shirt, I want it on a hat, like I need it on stickers. I, I love that quote so much, that's something I really connected to. That is something that if you choose to read this book I want you to keep in mind because because the way that the pacing is done, it's like slowly peeling back layers and unveiling more and more because this is a mystery. Um, and I think that's what it's set out to do. I think the writing style is something that a lot of people will be able to appreciate about this book too. Um, it's not overly flowery or overly poetic or anything, you know that that's not my jam, but it's simple yet effective. The way that Darcy like can put together a sentence 
um, and sprinkle out humor and references. I, I really appreciate. This book just it did everything I wanted it to do. It's the perfect balance of like humor and geekiness and loss and, you know, family history. And I think that Darcy just this this is just the perfect conglomeration of all of that. You know, you have sad scenes and scenes that made me cry. I cried a couple of times while reading this book. But um all of those things are counteracted by the humor and just the the humanness of the characters. All of these characters felt like humans in awkward situations. They crack a joke to make their friend smile. Or, you know, Ellie's mother, who is very present in the book, like I said, is just kind of like standing over her daughter's shoulder like, oh no, you're not going to that spooky house without me. I'm going to be there and you're going to wait in the car. You know, all of these characters felt like real people um, rather than caricatures, which is something I also really appreciate because I've said this many times that in especially speculative fiction, I find like a lot of times the characters don't feel realistic and I think that's something that Darcy excelled very well in here. I'm doing a lot with my head in this. <laughs> the last thing I want to touch on in this review is the way that family history ties so deeply into the story and into Ellie's identity. Ellie's sixth great-grandmother was a Lapont Apache hero. The way that these stories from sixth grade kind of tie back later into the book I think was something that was very well done and something that I did not expect. I found it to be very surprising and um, I'm not going to spoil it but I, I think you're really going to enjoy that too. As a Cherokee person, um, history and my family's history is something that is very important to me. My family, my descendants have helped shape me into the person I am today and you know have helped keep my culture alive and while it's something that I've definitely had to do some personal experience reconnecting to um, it's something that I was always grateful to have and I, I love seeing that represented and I think that's something that a lot of native kids are going to be able to appreciate reading this book too. I gave The Lots Way 5 out of 5 stars. I can't wait to receive my finished copy. There's so much that I didn't touch on in this book that you are going to have to read yourself to find out. Um, I do want to talk for a second about the cover. This cover is beautiful. It was illustrated by one of my favorite artists, Ravina Kai. All of the chapter headers have their own illustrations. So Rowena's art is also woven throughout this story and I think it really adds a lot to the table. The finished copy... It's fucking gorgeous. I can't wait to get my hands on a finished copy of this book and read it again and just experience a lot of his story and Darcy's writing and her characters and all of that. I can't wait to read this book over and over and over again and it will definitely be making it onto my best books of 2020. Five out of five stars. I highly recommend you pick it up. I am going to be trying to post this on release day. If you buy one book this year based off of my recommendation, please, 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 please make it this one. I don't often do standalone reviews on my channel, but because this is a book that I believe in and because Darcy is such an amazing person, she helped us run reading sprints for the Indigathon last year and like I said was so adamant about making sure that native reviewers got their hands on this book. I did want to give it a featured spot on my channel. I did want to promote it as much as I possibly can. You probably remember my tweets from the cover reveal and how hyped I was about it at the beginning of the year and I can't wait for all of you to read it and just experience this beautiful beautiful book. Comment question of the day. Are you excited to read A Lot's Way? If you are, please let me know down in the comments. If you've already read it, let me know your thoughts. Let me know your opinions. Just make sure you keep it spoiler free because this is a spoiler free review and I don't want anyone to get spoiled. That's no fun for them. And if you don't have time, you don't have the spoons, or you don't want to answer the comment question, then make sure you leave me an emoji, preferably a yellow heart or a puppy dog emoji because we're staying on theme with Kirby, the best fucking ghost dog on the planet. All of my links will be down below my Instagram my Goodreads, my Twitter, my PayPal, my Amazon wishlist, my coffee, anything that you want to find me on or send to you can do down there in the description as well as my contact email if you are someone who's wanting me to do a featured review on my channel. Alright, I hope you have a wonderful whatever it is, wherever you are. I will see you next time with another video. Thank you for watching. Okay.